What makes up classic musky habitat in a river? That's right, I want to spend perfectly good money dumping rocks and timbers into the Niagara River, and I'm going to show you why. We're going to look at the habitat preferences of adolescent and adult muskies once they've completed spawning and moved off into deeper water. Although it seems like just yesterday, we've been diving with these fish for over 10 years now. Let's start with where we see them sometimes and work our way up to where we expect to see them. River features that these fish use include rocks, edges, mixed terrain, rock piles, shipwrecks, and saddles. Occasionally we see fish holding over or behind a single rock. This gives them a rest area. This is more true in high current areas. Sometimes fish use very subtle structure. This is especially true if it's located near prime structure like rock piles or shipwrecks. Edges and breaks are like underwater paths or roadways for fish. This is true for all game fish. You can often see fish moving along these edges and breaks. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Areas of mixed terrain hold an awful lot of game fish and the muskies no exception. They seem to really thrive in areas with a lot of variety. Rock piles are very good locations for muscalunge. Not only do they provide a current break for the fish, they also provide food and shelter. A lot of small bait fish, Young game fish and crayfish inhabit these rock piles, making them a good source of food. People want to know why we spend so much time diving the rock piles. Well, every once in a while you're treated to a truly huge fish. Here's these two just hanging out. Here's a much smaller fish exhibiting the same behavior. Notice it sets up just downstream of the rock pile in a small depression. Fish love shipwrecks. So do divers for that matter. I don't know of a diver that doesn't like poking around a shipwreck. These are great fish habitats. A few Niagara River wrecks are fairly intact, but most of them are broken down from years of ice and current. Still, these provide great overhead structure for many fish, even the most broken down old shipwreck. It takes work, planning, and cleaning to turn an old ship into an artificial reef. 
Big projects never seem to get off the ground around here anymore. We would never be able to sink a wreck, but cribs on a larger, heavier scale than the one shown here would be a real benefit. If a muskie has a favorite hangout, it's a saddle. I think I first heard the term saddle in the mid-1980s from the inn fishermen. You've got a rock pile or two, the rise running in between them. That's a saddle. Here's a fish. I want you to notice how this fish expends very little effort to hold in this spot even though there's a good river current here. Put the tide slightly up so it can see what's coming at it from upstream and its tail down, it can pretty much just hang there with very little effort and keep an eye on everything. One more time, notice how the current speeds up as it goes over the structure. Take a look at this bass and how hard he has to swim to keep from getting pulled over. This fish rolls up out of its saddle to give us a little attitude. It'll get your heart beating a little bit faster, that's for sure. Power Project provides clean, low-cost power to many businesses in New York State. The plant provides good-paying jobs and hydro is a renewable energy resource, but I'd just like to see a few pennies go back into the river.